I I know you as a guy. Hmm. I know that you're genuinely a respectful person. Huh. But a lot of people, you know, when they read things online, they make assumptions about a human being. Oh, like that. Yeah. Oh man. I think so here's the thing I've learned. Yeah. Okay. I've been in a, I've been in the news consistently for 5 years. If there's one thing I've learned, everything you read in the news not necessarily the truth. Hmm. Right, here's how the news boils down. I don't want to make any comments about everything, anything. Yeah. But the news, news is, news follows views, right? So mm. it's no longer about the truth. Mm. The truth is extremely complicated and nuanced, mm. and the news is meant to be sexy and fast. Mm-hmm. The truth is not sexy and fast. The mm. truth takes very long to understand. Mm. It's like about Kashmir, right? If someone came and said, "Hey, tell me about Kashmir," and you are like, "Okay." Here's what I have read about Kashmir. Let's go back 60, 70, 80 years ago, when India as a country was being formed. This person is like, "Mirko, abhi kisi ko gandu bolana hai? Why have we gone back 60, 70 years ago?" Hmm. But if you want, if you want some, if you want to understand something in depth, it requires context, which the news doesn't have space for. Hmm. News, abhi share karo, abhi views karo. So um, I would suggest for most people, ki stop looking at the news as the absolute truth. start using your using your brains first of all don't consume every piece of news that you see and what the, what this does is it makes people start judging people thinking that everybody is either black or white mm. there is no gray mm. fact is everybody is gray mm-hmm. nobody is black mm-hmm. or nobody is white mm-hmm. um aaj we are ready to get angry on people without thinking for a second because hum sab gussa isliye hote kyunki humko bhi like chahiye mm. i think the internet fundamentally changed the day retweets were invented the day there were like buttons in the comment section of e- youtube and instagram because that's it started giving people an incentive to behave in a way that could get them likes and not react genuinely to anything dude how long back did aib start like 2000, 29 2009 no 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 uh, 2000 2011 early 2011 i think it started oh. so aib started in 2011 dude it's 2019 now yeah um straight up bro to bro question hmm. like money like where is that coming from right now <laughs> where is my money coming from right yeah. now so i have actually one of the biggest mistakes that i made was i didn't learn about compound interest early in life i learned hmm. about it way later hmm. when this whole thing happened i got diagnosed with clinical depression in december i was like i need to get out of i need to get out of this city because hmm. everybody in this city is from the media world and it's hard to it's hard to feel better about yourself when everybody else is living a life that you want to hmm. So I moved to Bangalore. My friend Kunal Shah, who is in Bangalore, he he told me that why don't you surround yourself with other people who are you know doing things that's not in your domain and it'll really help you. And he said use this time to turn this sadness into fuel for growth later. And then that really helped me. And he always made me feel like the startup world is something that yeah. I could uh, I I, could I, be I a agree, part bro. Of. Like yeah. knowing you as a guy, or yeah. it's uh, your strengths align with that. Yeah, so I moved to Bangalore and I started consulting for a few companies there. Mm. Um, and within a couple of months, I realized that oh, this is it's great. <laughs> <laughs> so I was in Bangalore. I started consulting for a few companies there. Mm. I started thinking of some tech ideas while I was there. I surrounded myself with entrepreneurs from a completely new domain. I met some crazy entrepreneurs there, and. Uh, just surround myself with people who were smarter than me in so many other ways so mm. that was amazing and within 2 3 months i was like cool if i if i don't have a life in the i was ready to quit a life in the media mm. and do For, what i don't know anything i just didn't want to be in the public domain dude it was terrible all my friends from bangalore who i just became friends with they were like itna kyu dukhi ho raha life mein because i would i wouldn't do anything i would just i was be at home i would to take a couple of meetings in bangalore i'd do all my work from home and i would just sit at home i wouldn't leave and i was like after a point i was like what the fuck is wrong with with people you know people just make assumptions no i blame the media for it partly so that was really demoralizing so so that that happened in bangalore i really found like the right set of people the right set of people who made me realize like the thing that they would keep repeating is you fucking you you got here from nowhere what the fuck are you feeling like you'll never be able to get up again and Like I remember, a couple of my friends there, they knew me back in the day, and I remember one particular night we were sitting and talking about early days of how I wa- used to be in college, and that's when I realized that oh, my mom's a my mom works in a bank, my dad works in HR, 
I have no business being in the media world at all. Forget being a comedian and a successful one at that, and then starting something that revolutionizes the way we do court. So people say, I have no business being in this world. And then I was like, oh, why am I beating myself up? I mean, it sounds simple, but this realization takes months that you can get up again. So that was pretty. That was pretty amazing. I love Bangalore and. Uh, Now I'm here. I know at some point in life I'll do something in tech, because the games they play in Bangalore are so much better than the games we play. Like here. for example, Th- dude, Bombay plays status games. Mm. Bombay plays. Me itna cool hu bro. Yeah, Bombay is all about status. If if someone is number one, someone has to be number two. Mm. But Bangalore, because I mean there is some element of status games in Bangalore, but largely they play wealth games, right? The investor and the startup game is wealth game. Which is your success will be my success if I invest mm. in you. If collaboration, you collaboration. How can we help help each other? So Bangalore is fantastic in that sense, and Bangalore is so optimistic. The worst case in Bangalore is you know uh, so much better than the worst case in Bombay. So I love that about Bangalore because yeah. people it's very much like Mumbai in the sense you know how people come to Bombay to become something in the world of mm. media. Come from small town, mm. etc., cetera, etc., cetera, with the hope and dream in their eyes. Mm-hmm. So Bangalore is very similar to that. You meet people who have come from all walks of life, who all have come with just one germ of an idea, and they come and they meet random people. I know I met founders who are just living with their employees in one house, mm. and they would just talk cool shit. Yeah. Literally every day, the con their conversation would be like, "Did you read this article? Did you read this theory? Did you read?" What this yeah. philosopher has said, and I was just like, yeah. "What fucking world are you in? Yeah. You know what the fuck I would discuss? Is ne kitna chya ye banaya? Iska jo ye unfunny hai? Or is ne dekha isko Twitter pe kya bola? I was like, what the fuck is this life in Mumbai? Mm. Which was really nice. I think, yeah. dude, like I study a lot of yoga. That's yeah. the one change that's happened huh. like in the last two years. Huh. And uh, yoga, cons- the world of yoga, considers mm. Bangalore as a key spiritual capital for the world as well. Oh really? Yeah, and they say that wherever. There is like spirituality. There's also always learning and knowledge yeah. and positivity. Yeah. So all everything you're saying actually encapsulates that same thought. Yeah, Bangalore. You felt that? You felt that like more better energy in Bangalore. Oh yeah, way better energy. Yeah. I love the energy there. I love the. I I think uh, yeah, Bangalore gave me hope and spirit and everything. Yeah. You're kind of in that investor mode right now. So I tell all my boys, the guys who are recording this, Rajas has been with me from the start. You met him like two three years back. Mm. I tell all of them that you're a fighter pilots, but there will be a stage in your career where you have to stop being a pilot, come down to the control room, and have five pilots under you. Yeah. Which is what yeah. you're doing right now. You're that yeah, safe. You yeah. were a pilot, and now you've come back into yeah. control room. Yeah. What do you see in potential pilots that you want to work with? Those potential young kids. What do you go like? Okay, ha. Ye na door jayega. This might sound wrong, but I think. So when I do my interviews now to hire kids, I all often ask them. Where do you grow up? What was childhood like? I discuss childhood a lot more now. If there are people who have some sort of brokenness, it's usually an indication of drive. Right? Yeah. People who are immensely driven, I love those people. Um, I also am very blunt in asking them where, what do you want to do in life? But I'm also very clear in saying that this is the role I want you to play in my life. Hmm. And you tell me what do you want to learn from me? Learn that and leave, hmm. because the Indian mentality is often. Oh, if I hire you, then you are now mine. You know what I'm saying? We have a very bonded labor, fucking old old school type of way of working. We But don't. But or like, or family? Huh? Like, dude, like at least I have that with my boys. What? My boys are family for life. They're family for life, and sometimes in family you just gotta let them go, dude. You gotta you gotta let them uh, see their own true potential. So now my approach to working with people is: you're not gonna work with me forever. You're only gonna work with me for some time. I want you to go do your own thing, and when you go do your own thing, I want to be a I want to be a part of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which is a much better place. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah that, that's the same logic, dude. It's yeah. family. Enthusiasm is great. I love lazy geniuses. This is something that I really like. Um, I think hard work is overrated. I think laziness is underrated. We'll agree to disagree on that, yeah. but go on. Yeah, let me explain. Uh, our perception of hard work is. a uh, quantity it's not it's not quality and uh, lazy geniuses are people with fantastic ideas uh, and they'll find the shortest quickest way to achieve mm. whatever is required uh, and i think laziness is severely underrated in today's day and age um, I'll, i'll give you i'll give you an example right i wanted a channel that would i wanted my own distribution okay and i really enjoyed gaming but what i think really is working for me 
is the fact that gaming is a great content hack hmm. right because i have a very fun personality if i play games it will translate to that hmm. so i can create a video a day because of because of gaming it's jugaad content it's jugaad so this i think is a product of me being a lazy lazy person um so i would i would always pick a lazy geni- genius over someone who's who's nice but it, it takes them a little, little while longer so um i really like people who uh, one of the things i often ask is tell me something that this is a question i ask in the interview tell me something that that a lot of your friends disagree with you about what is an opinion about that you have that you feel is some most people disagree with you about that really shows radical thinking to me um that really shows people who are slightly slightly more fearless um that really helps because one of the things that we have to recognize when people want to work with us they usually want to work with us because we are us you know what i'm saying like i'm always worried about are you just here because it's going to be cool working with me or what is what is this thing so i would want people who are around me to be fearless in that sense that all, that really helped it at aib uh, i love putting young people in shoes that they shouldn't be in at that time what what's a deal breaker of you like with a young person ki you've hired him and then he's done something fucked up and then what's a deal breaker i just think uh, refusal to learn or i think close mindedness is 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 a big problem for me hmm. i think people who are willing Rigid. to adapt and yeah rigidity is a, is a, is a big problem hmm. i think people who are willing to adapt people who are malleable are if your brain is a rock hmm. i don't like it if your brain is a sponge that's way better hmm. because new ideas can't penetrate a rock Mm-hmm. you know sponges just absorb mm-hmm. that's what i love <laughs>